Mm, you want them to do well. And I'm French like you and I enjoy the entrecots and the red wine. But who does your head say is winning this weekend? And what does your heart say? My heart says South Africa because, uh, you know, I just caught up with the game earlier today. Didn't have an opportunity uh, to watch the Irish game. And, uh, you know, I just watched it in teams. And knowing the box, they're very disappointed. And uh, and for us, you know, South Africa, rugby, it's, it's more than just a game. You're representing a nation. You know, you're creating hope in South Africa. And uh, the players, they always feel that responsibility to give back to South Africa. And they know just lifts up the spirit. So I know it's a wounded beast. It's going to come into France this week. So I'm really excited and really looking forward to that. And uh, I've experienced games like that, losing on tour. And uh, the pressure's on, not just uh, amongst each other as a team, but also you're feeling the pressure from back home. The public is not always that lenient towards the Springbok team. So that's the heart. Not only, we all know it's going to be close, but not only what does the head say, as Johnny said, because it is a really tough one to call, but in your, with your coaching hat on, Where's it going to be won and lost? It's kind of it's kind of like watching two scientists that work, you know, with Rassi Rasmus and uh, Fabian Galt, because they're very meticulous in their work. And especially, you know, I've been following the French team, what they've been doing, you know, their preparation is it's unbelievable. You know, we've got a few of the coaches that's also at Marcusi at the moment and watching the guys train. Everything is worked out to the smallest detail, the timing, the shot clock, everything. You know, it's all about precision training with high intensity. And I think it's the first time I've ever seen coaches getting together, using a team to prepare for the international team as well. You know, so that was quite impressive to see taking a, an amateur side and actually putting together all the training sessions that they want to do with the internationals and with the senior players. So it's going to be quite tough. I do believe um, France does have the extra edge they have ability to attack out of nowhere they're so much more disciplined than they've been in the past their defense is amazing solid on defense strong defense and you just got all these amazing players that are consistently playing at the highest level every single week in france it's going to be a massive physical battle obviously the weekend but your area of expertise the scrum time if you had to put wager on the better scrum who do you think's got the better scrum at the minute south africa or france that's, it's, it's a tough one. Obviously, I've got to back my man, Winnie Antonio. <laughs> He's been doing great work for us here at La Rochelle. Uh, but watching the game, watching the, the Irish Springbok clash, you know, um, I was quite impressed by the Irish scrum. They put the, the Springboks mm. under press, pressure, which we haven't seen in a while. Uh, very few teams have managed to achieve that. But Australia as well put the, 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 the French team under pressure at scrum time. So, you know, that's the thing, you know, being a prop, you know, it's about pride. It's everything. It's like somebody stole your cake, you know, you know like us props, we love our cake. So you, <laughs> don't, you don't touch our cake. You don't eat our cake. So, you know, for the boys, I'm, I'm sure they're going to be pumped up. They have a point to prove. And, you know, the scrum is all about pride. And, you know, there's the ego part of it as well. So it's going to be a tough one. I do believe that uh, the, the, the spring box at the moment, technically, they uh, are the better team, but at the end of the day, <laughs> France, South Africa, anything can happen. And, uh, you know, I always tell the players, you got to work with humility. Scrum is all about humility. You can be dominating one game and the next game, you could be going backwards and uh, you can be counting your blessings all, all the way. So it's going to be interesting. And you mentioned Winnie there. Obviously, on the other side, you played with Cyril Bay in Toulouse when he was obviously more of a youngster back then. So what was he like back then? And how much has he improved over the last sort of five, six years since you were playing with him? Oh, massive transformation. I remember when he was a youngster, you know, himself, Julien Marchand, Dor Dorian Aldegheri, you know, they all came up through the ranks and uh, Cyril and Dorian, they weren't the hardest workers. And, you know, I was still grinding it out. I want to get those extra few years in before I hang up the boots. And I was just doing crazy training like a typical South African, just doing crazy fitness and, you know, putting the hard yards. And I remember back in the day, Ugo Mola were putting him on the pump. It's, it's impossible. The guy's 35 years old. He's killing you in the fitness. And uh, you could see there was a switch. I think they realized to play at the highest level, you need to be in a certain physical state. And there was a massive mind shift with Cyril. And he started doing really well. Picked up his fitness, massive emphasis on the scrum. He became a really strong scrummager. And, you know, it was great to see those youngsters coming through. And, you know, uh, 
And uh, even though it was tough for me at the end of my career, you know, you would like to play, get those extra few games in. The guy started performing really well. So, you know, Cyril Bai, great scrummager, unbelievable ball carrier. So it's going to be interesting to see, but he's only recently come back from injury and uh, he hasn't had a lot of game time and we'll see whether he's sharp enough for those scrums. How important is that game time for us from the scrummaging element of your game? Because we talk about it in terms of ball carrying, catching your second win, working your way into the game, but... It's like all the other facets of the game. So surely for him, we, we just talked before you came on about, you know, the first scrum between Tupo and Bai where he got turned inside out. Is that because he's undercooked or he's not ready or he hasn't had scrum prep? Or is it does it make a real difference not being scrum ready and having that match fitness? A uh, massive difference. Always say scrum is like a woman. A woman will take your breath away and scrum will take your legs away. So <laughs> the, big, the, the biggest thing is you need to get that. We talk about the lactic battle. You know, you that jelly legs. And uh, that's the thing. It takes time to get used to. You need to get used to that lactic in the legs. You need to be able to repeat efforts after the scrum. And it's difficult to replicate that. You can work hard in the gym. You begin doing all the training one, but nothing really replicates the fatigue that you experience in the game and especially international level. But, you know, surreal, you know, he's come through so many obstacles and, um, you know, as a world-class player and uh, he has the mindset to do it. At the end of the day, you know, you might not always be in the physical state to 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 do what is necessary, but if you have that mental shift or that mindset, anything is possible.